Kevin Kaplan is the Vice President of Marketing and Technology at Long Realty Company, Southern Arizona's leading real estate company and a Berkshire Hathaway affiliate. Kevin also serves on the Board of Directors of, uh, for the Tucson Association of Realtors and is the uh, 2014 MLS Vice President. Kevin? Before I get into what's happening today in the marketplace, I just want to take one step back and talk a little bit about how we got here. Um, the last nine of 10 years in residential resale here in Tucson, we lived in a world of up and downs. Um, we ran up in the early 2000s, we crashed the mid 2000s, we kept crashing for a while, five plus years. And then the fall of 2011, the market started to pick up again. Uh, a lot of things um, kind of coincided at the same time, depressed pricing, um, a lot of distressed properties, investor activity, uh, money was pretty cheap to finance if you could get it. All those things helped to serve to fuel the market back up. Uh, what we've seen actually in the last year is um, as we went uh, up and down and then started to come up again, the market's actually leveled off in the last year or so. Um, and we're going to kind of walk through that, but some of that's driven by the investors that were buying up distressed properties, the, the big investors, have really retreated out of the marketplace. So what we're left is, is your traditional buyer and seller that are working in the market. Um, this first uh, slide I have up here is a look at closed residential resale in uh, Tucson. The um, grayish bar is 2012, the light blue bar is 2013, and the yellow bar is 2014. And you can look at the first three quarters uh, that the marketplace actually uh, is down in closed units. Uh, overall year to date, we're down just under 10% where we were last year. <coughs> And I think for a lot of folks, uh, look at this and say, well, the market's down. Um, back when the market was crashing for five years, we would have killed for a normal market. <laughs> so here we are. We're going to talk about how the market's really normalized. Um, so it's down, but that isn't necessarily mean that things are trending down. It means that the market is stabilizing, I think, which probably is better for long-term stability uh, of real estate here in Tucson uh, versus the cycle of uh, bubbles and bursts. <coughs> Uh, when we look at the supply side of things and look at listing inventory, here's a trend over the last two years. Uh, two, two years ago or so, we uh, actually in many cases had a real shortage of inventory. Uh, the distressed properties got bought up. Um, we had a lot of buyer activity, investor activity, new construction uh, hadn't uh, cycled back in and we're still trying to do that to create product for the demand. Um, so we had uh, a real shortage, and you can see how inventory is added over time. Uh, part of that is because as prices have come up in the, in the last few years, as the market started to appreciate a little bit, some people came back into the marketplace. People that may have been underwater now are in equity positions or at least a balanced place uh, to do that. So we've seen a more, sta a more stabilization on the inventory side. And when you look at the relationship between supply and demand, it's something we call months of inventory. Okay. And it's basically how long would it take to sell out the inventory we have at the current sales pace. Overall, for the Tucson marketplace, we're right about five and a half months. And five to six months is what we kind of consider a balanced normal market, so we're right in there overall for Tucson. Um, but I, I wanted to take it a step, drill down just a step further, because for the average home buyer or seller that's in the market, that doesn't mean that the conditions they face in are balanced. Okay, so we've actually broken down months of inventory by price ranges. So you can see that, you know, in the price ranges of 100, below that up to 175, maybe even 200, we're actually working in you know, three to four months of inventory, which is a little bit more of a seller's market. So the conditions those folks may face uh, as a buyer may be a little more competitive than at higher price points. You can see our mid-tier pricing in the 200s and so. Um, is really more balanced right around six months, but um, one of the sectors of, re of residential that kind of lagged in the recovery of the last three years was the higher end, the mid to high price and luxury market never really uh, had a good shot in the arm in that recovery. It was really driven on the lower price points. Um, and you can see the kind of inventory levels we're still holding at those. Um, though I will add, uh, one of the things that's not reflected in this chart, but on the high end, 800000 and above, which we do a lot of business in, 
We've actually seen this year uh, that marketplace uh, a little more consistent activity in the last, I'd say, four months or so. And year to date, if you look at sales in the luxury market compared to last year, there's actually a little more activity this year than there was last year. So that's a little bit encouraging because that, that segment of the market never, never got in the short, shot in the arm of the rest did. Uh, the other thing I wanted to take a look at is price. Um, and overall for the marketplace, since the market's normalized, prices have kind of flattened out. But again, for the buyer or seller at a particular price point, that doesn't mean that what they're seeing is flat. Um, in the lower price points, uh, under 100,000, we've seen some price appreciation versus this time last year. But very quickly, it starts to flatten out after that. You can see 100 to 200, 200 to 300, we're only at a 1%, it's basically flat. And as you go up from there, we've actually now seen um, pricing go backwards in the mid-price mid market and the upper tier marketplace. Um, and you know that presents opportunities for, for buyers. So I will say a lot of sellers got caught off guard and we had to do a lot of work consulting with sellers um, when the market started to flatten out because their expectation and what they're hearing in the national media was that the real estate market was still coming back. You hear locally as it trended to, to be more normal and flat, uh, people actually priced themselves too high. So that's something that's had an adjustment in the last year is sellers, uh, especially in that mid to higher price point, having to adjust down. And buyers are very picky. They, want, uh, they don't want to have to buy something they're going to have to update. They want it fresh, new, and priced right. So that's kind of what's happening uh, overall, more normal and traditional market. The investors, uh, there's still some, uh, but uh, in mass, uh, they're not here. Sales are off pace from last year as the market normalizes. Increase in the number of homes for sale, we saw that. That's not necessarily a bad thing, that's more balanced. More buyer choices and negotiating power than the last two years. So we were a seller's market. You know, uh, the seller, in many cases, was getting multiple offers and had some negotiating power, and that balance of power shifted a little bit. Uh, greater competition between home sellers, and real estate's still local. So even what's going on in Tucson, I kind of broke down the market by price point because you have to, you can see that how different it is from somebody in one price point to another of what they're having to deal with. So, uh, but we think uh, a balanced normal market is good. Um, there's always financing challenges and things that have to get worked through. But just because the market's down a little bit this year doesn't mean it's bad. 